Welcome to Layer of the Alchemist. And on today's episode, I have a special guest, Martin Popoff is here joining me to discuss his new book, Honesty is No Excuse, Thin Lizzy on Record. Uh, I'm going to let you tell, tell, tell everybody what this book is about, Martin. I know you've written other books in this in this style. I love them. I, I've heard other people, they, they love these too. So tell us about the new Thin Lizzy book. Yes, you're too modest because you are in this, <laughs> which is very cool. So, yeah, no. So the idea is I assemble a um, a, a panel of uh, wise music swamis, experts uh, who, you know, I, I sort of vet and make sure they can talk intelligently about these bands. And, uh, yeah, I've been doing a series of these books. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, 12, 15 people, 10 people, uh, depending on how big the catalog is. And what we do is uh, we go through every single studio album and do a Q&A on everyone generally touching down on on every track um you know i th this this all started as a project that i was doing for uh, my u.s publisher uh voyager and we did some big kind of coffee table books like this uh quite a few years ago uh but then they suspended doing any music books they're now they're back into music books and i've done a few for them again which is great um but uh, in the interim, uh, you know, I got this going with uh, Jerry Bloom, my publisher over uh, Weimer Publishing over in the UK. And we've done a uh, we've done the cure, Blue Oyster Cult, Robert Plant. And now it's uh, now it's the Thin Lizzy. And um, I, I think this is my favorite one so far. The Blue Oyster Cult was very cool, too. And you were part of that as well. Um, but uh, yeah, the what I what I really like about these books um, is uh as I as I move on, like I, I didn't think I could do another book on Thin Lizzy because I've done the story in three books and then that got compressed down to two books. And then I did a, a, a detailed timeline, Thin Lizzy, a visual biography book as well. Um, so I thought I was all Thin lizzy out. But the cool thing is, is when I go through this exercise with people like new theories come up, new connections and, oh, this sounds like this. And uh, and here, you know, c compare this riff to this riff by even by another band or whatever. And uh, here's what I think Phil was trying to tell us in these lyrics and whatnot. Um, so there's so there's levels of detail all over the place. I haven't thought about for years sort of thing that made me kind of super excited about going back and playing these records again. And then also what I find is happening happening which is pretty magical uh is um when somebody brings up a cool theory on something uh it sparks something in my mind and i go yeah and you know what it also sounds like this one and this one and this one yeah. and then they go wow you're right i never thought of that and so all of a sudden uh you know live right there we're we're like building a new sort of theory and theme and concept uh about you know the myriad ways to to look at thin lizzy and and what i've started doing is because I'm the moderator through these books, what I've started doing is making sure I'm making more use of my question space and I will, I will put in those theories and stuff. So I'm joining the discussion more as these, uh, as these books move on. So yeah, I, I found this to be a really rewarding exercise and it, it sounds like people are into it and, uh, they are liking this concept as well. Yeah, it's great because, uh, what what I love about it is for everybody out there, if you're a fan of the contrarians, Sea of Tranquility, my channel, channels like this where people get together and you deep dive on albums, that that's basically what this is, you know, in like a book form. You you've got a bunch of people, they get together, they're throwing their opinions out there, they're, you know, talking about these songs, these albums. So you're getting these different perspectives on things and you're getting these different angles, like, yeah, gee, I never really thought of it that way. Or, you know, I never noticed that, you know, though that, there's a lot of that kind of that that kind of stuff. And it's kind of fun hearing different people's perspectives, what different people hear and and get out of it. How many people I know. I did three records, right? I did uh, Vagabonds of the Western World, Bad Reputation, and Renegade. Uh, so how many different people did you did you have in this book? Do you know? Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we had a panel of 12, 12 disciples. And uh, yeah, and everybody brought something different to the table, right? Um, you know? You brought uh, quite a lot of musical theory, which is really cool. Um, and, you know, Peter Jones as a drummer and people brought radio perspectives and even even somewhat outsider perspective uh, perspectives, uh, perspectives from being in the UK. Um, you know, and one thing I want to add is that 
is that, and I always caution people I talk to for these books is like, I'm going to edit the hell out of you, right? I'm going to make <laughs> you look 20 IQ points smarter than you actually Thank are. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> yeah, be, because the idea is we, we don't want this to really read like a conversation, like a transcript of a conversation. So it's taken halfways towards, I really wrote this out. Like it's like it's somebody if they were writing their own book. So it's conversational but um but it's but it's polished a fair bit so it it reads pretty well you know you aren't thinking in your head that you're really just hearing someone talking off the top of their head uh, about this stuff yeah and there's a, there's also you know cool pictures yeah. inside it you've got the colored photo thing in the middle but with each album you know sometimes you show the uh a single or the album cover or something yeah, like that. Yeah, little me memorabilia shots uh, as yeah. well. And yeah, one eight page color section with captions and stuff as well. But uh, yeah, and I'm, I I like the font we've used for this better than the old ones. It's uh, now we're using a serif font in these. And I'm working on a couple more right now uh, at the same time. Uh, and uh, and again, finding the whole the whole experience rewarding, even though it's on bands that I know really well. The funny, I was, I was talking to Reed little uh, on, on messenger the other day thinking, Oh man, I think the worst one of these might be the cure one because I feel like I didn't know the cure well enough. And I'm, I'm wondering, you know, if people are saying things that are, that are like opinions that might not be particularly accurate to the deep dive cure fans. And, and, and Reed is like, no, man, the opinions, the more provocative or out there, even if it's a little bit of an outsider opinion is kind of cool. Um, but that one, that one also is a little bit short, but these ones are, are good long books. I mean, this is 282 pages, right? Um, so yeah, it's every single studio album. And uh, I, I think this is, um, this is a really cool way to get, you know, a, a reader it, totally excited about running back to the albums again and playing. Yeah. That's what I hear time and time again is like, I'm playing the album while reading that chapter. Yeah. And what I love about this format is, and I don't know, I'm, I'm sure there's other people that are like me when I get books like this, I love the fact that everything is there. It's, it's album by album. It's, it's nice and tidy and orderly and, and, and I, I love the, being able to jump around. And when I get a book like this, I'll often go to, you know, the album that, you know, maybe like Thunder and Lightning. Gee, I wonder what people are going to say about that one, you know? And so you can sort of jump around in books like this. You can read it from beginning to end. At some point, I do this all the time, like uh, your ACDC 50 book, you know, I'll, I'll be in the mood for flick of the switch. I'm listening to flick of the switch and I go grab your book and open it up and, you know, your album by album ACDC book, you know, and what did everybody say about that? And so, you know, I've, I love the fact that you can read these things from the beginning, but you can also just sort of, if you're in the mood at any point, you can just dive in at any specific spot there and just kind of have a fun read and get your mind around uh, that particular album, that particular era. Yeah. And generally speaking, I mean, there are, there are tangents that take us to other places. And then sometimes I'll, I'll, you know, right in the middle of whatever be middle of side one, it's like, Oh, what do you think of Phil as a, as a lyricist in general and stuff? So there's that general stuff. But um, when I'm doing these books now, I really have a format where I'm starting to put everybody's quotes in. And I, I just go, I, I, my, my skeletal, chapter on every album i i just whack in all the song titles in order and I've, I've got opening remarks album cover production all the songs and then at the end i have closing remarks and then what i do is i take everybody's interview and start pop popping everything in into place and uh and then and then like i say start really editing and polishing this stuff and fact checking and things like that um, uh, just, just to get it as good as possible. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. The first one that, that, that I was skeptical about that, that caused me to go, this is actually really rewarding for me was the Blue Oyster Cult where, where I thought I, I can't possibly write anymore on Blue Oyster Cult. Um, <laughs> and yet I'm, I'm listening to all you guys talk and it's like, oh, this is, actually really interesting i never thought of it that way right yeah yeah and uh and so that's that's why i like doing these and and i could see doing a few more so yeah and i think that this is people like you know when it's just something that's just listing off okay this happened on this date this happened on that date mm -hmm. it's really fun hearing other people's thoughts and other people's angles on things and it's i think it's the reason why people are attracted to 
the YouTube channels and stuff like that. They love hearing people, people's perspectives on things and where they come from and uh, on certain records and certain songs and stuff like that. So yeah, I love it. I just love the organized nature of it. I love you're getting right to the point. Good questions that sort of, you know, spark people off. What do you think of this? You know, what do you think of that? And I, I just, I love the way it's organized. It's a great, it's a great read. It's, it's an easy, fun read. Uh, yeah. I love this series. Uh, so keep them coming. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very cool. All right. Uh, so any final thoughts on the book you want to share with anybody, everybody out there? Not particularly. So they've, uh, they've been in for about a week uh, as, as we're speaking here and um, yeah, you can get them at martinpopoff.com. There's PayPal buttons for America, Canada, international. I sign them, send them out from the office here. I'm getting them out pretty quick after as soon as we're done here, I've got a bunch more to mail. So um, yeah. And uh, any, anything that is in print is all there at martinpopoff.com. My, my main, more than half my income every year is a mail order guy of my own books. Um, so uh, yeah, the, and anything that's in print, I am supplying out of my office here. Yeah. And I say this all the time, uh, Martin's based in Canada, but uh, he's got the most, I don't know how you do it, the most reasonable postage of anything that I order from and the quickest. I'm just absolutely amazed at how quick your your stuff arrives. So uh, so yeah. that's all. Sorry. So I'll leave a link uh, down below to Martin's website. Uh, so make sure you check out his book, Honesty is No Excuse, Thin Lizzy on Record. Uh, thanks for joining me, Martin. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you here again at the lair. All right. All right.